Right. I'm here with uh, Joe Petrelli. Well, I'm really glad I'm here. What was it that you wanted to get from the conference, and uh, what is it like the key message that you want to send to people? Derek Evans from uh, AFBI, Agrofood and Biosciences Institute. My name is Anna Forbes and I work for Thames Rivers Trust and I recently for them project managed the Thames Catchment Community Eels project. I'd like to thank Jack for inviting me to speak today about the project to you. I'm just going to share my screen now and tell you a little bit more about the project. Thames Catchment Community Eels project was led by Thames Rivers Trust, working with fellow Rivers Trust Action for the River Kennet, South East Rivers Trust and Thames 21, working closely with ZSL and Thames Estuary Partnership. The project was funded by the Green Recovery Challenge Fund and ran from December 2020 through to the end of March 2022. The main strands of the project were about connecting and reconnecting communities with their local rivers and the amazing European eel. Citizen science, with ZSL leading this aspect of the project, we wanted to develop a methodology for trained volunteers to identify and map barriers to eel migration. We also wanted to increase scientific knowledge through eel trap monitoring. The project was about creating and retaining jobs in the environmental sector and about partnership working. So all the different knowledge, experience and skill sets brought together from all the different organisations involved, using it to do a pilot project that would bring about far more than any of us could deliver working on our own. So we know that barriers are a big problem for eels and the Thames catchment is no exception. This environment agency map shows you the amount of barriers that they've got mapped within the Thames catchment at the moment. So this project obviously was not going to be able to conquer all of those, but we were starting out with targeting five rivers for this project. And those were the River Mole, the Ravensbourne, the Upper Brent, the Middle and Lower Kennet, and the Pang. So the citizen science aspect, which was christened obstacles, started with us coming together with ZSL and looking at their eel barrier assessment tool, EBAT, which is all about assessing barriers for passability to eels and creating a technical guide that volunteers could use out in the field or in this case on the riverbank together with using the modified river obstacle app which now has the EBAT scoring system on it the higher the score the more likely it is passable for eels and making sure that volunteers were more than adequately trained to actually get us that robust data. As that data would come in, it was then going to be cleaned and checked and then fed into Thames Estuary Partnership's Fish Migration Roadmap, which is a great tool for visualizing river corridor connectivity. And this would then allow us in the fullness of time throughout the project to be able to visualize the barriers and working with the catchment partnerships, work out where would be the best wins, where would be the strategic places for opening up eel passage within those five rivers. So this pilot project was very much about collecting the robust data to allow us to make informed decisions for planning for future practical projects to do with either barrier removal, modification or creating bypass channels. So the one time that nearly everyone in our project got to actually meet face to face was um, last summer when we met at a stretch of the River Kennet to trial the app, trial the technical guide before 
getting that rolled out to our volunteers and here we are with some of the project officers and they're at a small weir and it's looking that there's actually what is identified and called crawling media along the edges of the wall there and if that's a continuous um, part of crawling media it means that the elves can actually make it up and over that weir so that weir wouldn't be a top priority for opening up river corridor connectivity. So once the project officers had been trained by ZSL and were happy and confident with using the app, using and understanding the technical guide, and they were then able to advertise within those catchments of those five target rivers and recruit obstacles volunteers. During the pandemic, we did a two-step training process. So the first part of the training after recruiting those volunteers was to do a live Zoom and ZSL, Azra and Joe sometimes joined us at the first few of these. And this was about the project officers enlightening those volunteers about the impact of river obstacles on the European eel, telling them a little bit more about eels and their life cycle and that the fact they spend most of their lives here in our freshwater rivers. So how important having as much of our rivers without these barriers, how important that is. And then once step one had been done of the live Zoom, we then moved on to step two, which was getting them out in the field with, and this is a screenshot from the technical guide, so that working in small teams, there was a practical training day with the project officer, out making sure they could identify those barriers, they understood the EBAT scoring system, any questions or queries could be answered, and that support was continued until volunteers felt empowered enough to go out in their own teams to specific stretches of the river so that we weren't duplicating resurveying the same areas and gradually over that summer through till January this year collecting data on those rivers inputting it into the app and then as I said earlier the data going into the fish migration roadmap so getting the volunteers out was a great way of like-minded people coming together walking the riverbank but getting us robust data with support ongoing support from those project officers so as that data came in the project officers were in touch with the catchment partnerships introducing them to the project as a whole, but specifically focusing on this eel barrier data that was coming in. This is part of the Tim Thames Fish Migration Roadmap, and it's showing our five target rivers. The purpley pink markers are showing you baseline data that had been brought together by Wanda from Thames Estuary Partnership at the start of the project. So that was where we had all of that baseline data. Then the green markers show you all the barriers that have been surveyed by the obstacles volunteers. And then the orangey markers show you where there were access issues. So what has the data told us as it has come in? So it's made us realize there's even more barriers than was initially thought. If we look at this graph, it shows you 294 barriers have been surveyed on our five target rivers. There were 17 access issues, 29 had been removed, 152 out of that 294 were extra. So these are barriers that weren't in any of the existing baseline data. The baseline data was got from AMBER, CABA, the Environment Agency, the River Obstacles app existing data and stakeholders. So this totals a 52% underestimate in the barriers on these five rivers. So not only did our obstacles volunteers get all that data for those five rivers, they surpassed themselves and actually surveyed 24 rivers in total. So that took it up to 457 barriers surveyed within the project, still the same 17 access issues, 32 barriers found to have been removed, 278 out of those 457 were extra barriers. So again, not in those existing data sets, which is a 61% underestimate of barriers. So it really does evidence the validity of doing this project and shows that there should be more of this method going out to 
other rivers to bring in robust, up-to-date data. Even the barriers that already were in the baseline data, many of them through the project, we've gathered new data. So we've got photographs of the barriers. We've now, we've been able to assess them for passability for eels, and also by working with the Environment Agency, we found out lots of other information that's been added in there too. So really useful to have this up-to-date data now to be working with. And that's where the project officers have then been working really hard to create their own local fish migration visions. And I'll talk about that a little bit more shortly. This is the final graph, and this is showing you all the different barrier types that have been identified with all that surveying. And so we can see that by far, it's weirs that feature more on most rivers. So I mentioned earlier the local fish migration visions. So this is just one still from each trust fish migration vision. So it's not only have they used that up-to-date data, but as I've said, they've used information from the Environment Agency because something needn't be our priority if it's already an Environment Agency priority to get eel passage on a particular stretch of river. So using all the up-to-date data and the collaboration and information sharing, each trust has been able to create their own local fish migration visions and prioritise and visualise where the best winds are and whether those are a quick win, where it could be done relatively cheaply or whether it's going to be something that's going to take a lot more money and a lot more thought that still would be a priority but would be something that's going to be a harder win. So this is what has been created and these can be found on each of the uh, Rivers Trust websites from our partners, showing you how they visualise the connectivity of the river. And then this is Philly from Thames 21. The thicker arrows are showing their bigger priorities and then the thinner arrows are those other ones. And gradually through the plan would be that we are working now on a legacy project and we will hopefully be working with the existing partners as well as expanding and working with more partners and rolling out obstacles more widely, doing more community and school engagement along other rivers, but also implementing some practical work to actually open up the river for eels using what we've found in this project. So moving on to the eel trap monitoring on the ember that happened. So volunteers for South East Rivers Trust volunteers were trained up and, and South East Rivers Trust project officers trained up to be able to train the volunteers and that meant another year of data gathered for ZSL's long-term eel monitoring project that feeds into the eel management plan for the Thames. So that was really good and it showed the importance of the ember for eel and that newly arriving alva are able to migrate upstream to Island Barned Weir from the Thames with 2,105 eels being measured and data collected on last year. And also towards the end of our Thames Catchment Community Eels project, we were able to fund the training for this year's volunteers to monitor the site at Moseley. And this is a ZSL priority site. So even though our initial project is over, that is still going to be benefiting eels this year. We also did a huge amount of eel educational outreach, and this was through eel talks, which were sometimes in person and sometimes via Zoom, and eel riverbank walks, and these, and also eel classroom workshops. So some schools had workshops in the classroom, some schools met with the project officers on the river bank. And we also work with clubs like Cubs and Brownie and Beaver groups, but also adult clubs, groups and organizations to get people again, outdoors on their river bank, or if it wasn't possible to get them out and on their river bank, it would be via Zoom or in person, just teaching them and 
getting them passionate and excited about European eels, what amazing fish they are, what an epic life cycle they have, and how their local river is really an important part of that. So it was great to work with so many and such a diverse amount of people and groups and get them understanding and fired up about eels. For those that we couldn't get out with us, there are resources that we developed by working together, which was another strength of working together, of using everybody's ideas to try and make the best resources we possibly could. So this involved that, and in all of these are still available at the Thames Rivers Trust website. We've got a free online eel game where you have to hatch out your egg and then make the journey across the ocean and into our rivers and then see if you can get on our eel leaderboard we develop eel comics and fact files and life cycle sheets and anatomy sheets and various other bits and pieces these were given out to children who were involved with us through the eel workshops or eel riverbank walks but equally you can look at them online or you can download them and print them out yourself if you've got any children that you want to excite about eels so I'd like to thank you very much for listening to me talking about the project. And if you're interested in finding out any more, please do visit our website. Or if you've got any questions, I'm really happy to answer them. And please get in touch through emailing me info at thamesriverstrust.org.uk. Thank you very much.